Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight into reviewing the living daylights out of what I'm sure will be the bright telephoto workhorse lens of choice for professional Nikon mirrorless shooters for years to come, the Nikon Z70-200mm f2.8 VR-S. It's only for Nikon Z mount mirrorless cameras, full frame or APS-C, and it's on the shelves now for a rather expensive price of US$2,700 or £2,600 here in the UK. A lot of money obviously, but this kind of bright telephoto zoom lens is the bread and butter optic for all kinds of professional shooters, offering a nice little medium telephoto zoom range and an aperture of f2.8 for getting pictures in darker situations and lovely out of focus backgrounds in your portrait and subject pictures. I'd like to thank Nikon UK for loaning me this lens for evaluation for a couple of weeks, although as usual this is a totally independent review. While Canon decided to shorten and lighten their own new 70-200mm lenses, Nikon have opted for a more traditional approach here, leaving you with a lens that zooms internally with all the advantages of that, but is still quite large and heavy, weighing in at over 1.3 kilograms or about 3 pounds, perhaps a missed opportunity to lighten things up there? Still, the lens looks cool and its build quality is very nice and solid, being a mixture of metal and heavy duty plastics with a metal tripod mount attached, the bottom of which can be removed. It features a fair bit of weather sealing, including a generous gasket around the rear mount, and it also can be used with Nikon's 1.4x and 2x teleconverters. The lens is very controllable on the outside. Towards the rear we get focus controls and a smooth moving customizable control ring, as well as a couple of extra customizable control buttons in front of that. Nikon's gimmicky but admittedly kinda cool OLED display sits on the top, able to show you various settings you're shooting at. Then comes the rubberized manual focus ring, it works really nice and responsively with the lens's focus motor, and some further good news is that the lens seems to exhibit no visible focus breathing as you focus in and out, except for perhaps just a slight zoom in when you're focused as closely as possible. The lens's autofocus motor works quite quickly, silently and accurately, tracking well it'll probably be even more confident than this on one of Nikon's latest camera bodies. Then comes the large rubberized zoom ring. As is often the case with an internally zooming lens, it works very smoothly, with no stickiness to it, and it's fairly quick to turn. The lens has its own image stabilization built in, here's some footage with it turned off and now turned on. As you can see, it's fantastically effective actually, holding your image really nice and firm, an essential feature on a telephoto lens. The front of the lens has a rubber trim to it to prevent damage from accidental knocks, and it comes with a lockable plastic hood which is nicely flocked on the inside. The front filter size is 77mm. Overall, the build quality is excellent here in just about every way imaginable, although it does feel a little heavy in use. Ok, let's look at image quality now, I'll be testing the lens on a Nikon Z7 camera with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor, in camera corrections are turned on for this test. At 70mm and f2.8, we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast in the middle of your images. The image corners are just a touch softer but still excellent. Stop down to f4 for a tiny boost in corner sharpness, brightness and contrast. The lens taser sharp down to f11, although at f16, softness emerges due to the effects of diffraction. Let's zoom in halfway to 135mm. It's the same story here really, at f2.8 image quality continues to be razor sharp in the middle and a little softer but still very nice in the corners. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 for those corners to see nice little increases in resolution. Let's zoom all the way in to 200mm. At f2.8, the middle of the image isn't quite as bitingly sharp as at wider angles, but it's still looking pretty nice here to be honest. Corner image quality isn't looking so great anymore though. Stop down to f4 to see more brightness in the corners, but no more sharpness. However, the middle of the image now sees a nice little extra punch of contrast. The middle of the lens stays as sharp as you stop down to f5.6 and the corners are 
well, still not fantastic to be completely honest. F8 sees just a marginal improvement, but stop down as far as F11 and diffraction begins to affect the contrast, and at F16 the sharpness is affected too. So overall, the lens puts in a very strong performance here, although the corner image quality at 200mm leaves a little to be desired. To be honest though, it's not the end, your corners at 200mm will very often be out of focus anyway, more so than at wider angles. Ok, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at vignetting and distortion. At 70mm and f2.8 we don't really see any distortion, but some vignetting can be spotted, stop down to f4 for those corners to brighten up. Zoom in to 200mm and some pretty clear pincushion distortion becomes apparent and those image corners look a lot darker, however stop down to f4 and they brighten significantly. You should definitely leave in-camera corrections turned on with this lens. The lens's very good minimum focus distance of 50cm means it can get you pretty close to smaller subjects here. At f2.8, close-up image quality is a little softer than at normal distances, but still quite respectable. Stop down to f4 for a nice improvement in sharpness there. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. At the widest angles, it's a great performance, with barely any visible flaring or glaring to be seen. However, zoom in and things deteriorate, and bright points of light in your images will cause quite a few issues, as you can see. A vitally important question for a lens like this is the quality of its bokeh, something that older 70-200mm lenses struggled with in the past. Most of the time though, your backgrounds look pretty gorgeously smooth with this lens. Just occasionally, difficult backgrounds like foliage can show a touch of messiness though. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. Do you want the good news or the good news? The lens doesn't seem to display any at all. Nikon missed a beat here, they should have labelled the lens as being apachromatic, which is a badge of honour for geekier optic enthusiasts like me. Overall, as you've seen, the Nikon Z70-200mm to f2.8 offers a great performance in almost every way, if not quite a perfect one. It may not have the sharpest image corners at 200mm or the best resistance to flaring once you're zoomed in, but apart from that it is bitingly sharp with nice looking bokeh and low chromatic aberration. Its build quality, image stabilisation, autofocus and low focus breathing are all greatly desirable also. The price is high and I wish the lens could have been just a little smaller and lighter, but it's still an excellent workhorse optic and professional photographers will not be disappointed in it at all, so it has to come, highly recommended. Finally I tested it, sorry it took me so long to get round to this pretty important lens, Nikon shooters. I want to take a moment now to say a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting me over on Patreon. At a time when ad revenues are low, it really does make a huge difference. I love making these videos, but they're a lot of work too. Check out my Patreon page down in the description below for some exclusive bonus content, and ciao for now everyone.